Banana Slam Jam. His summary real quick is, Hi BSJ, I'm a former Han player with about 1k hours in Dota. I play mostly 1 and 3, and I've gained about 400 MMR in the past few months. I'd like to review my farming patterns, the last hitting, and anything else that you think will make me play better. Cool. So let's go ahead and get the call going. Uh, cool. So I read your summary on Gamer Sensei here. Uh, mm -hmm. what's your MMR? Um, let me check right now. I think it's twenty seventy. I was playing last night. Yeah, about twenty one hundred. Twenty one hundred. Okay. Yeah. Um. So you said you had about one k hours in Dota. Um. How much Han did you play? I played a good amount, but I mean, it was when I was younger. I'd say I have a similar amount, like one to two k hours in in Han. Okay. Um. If you had to say, do you primarily play one or three, or do you just play about 50-50? Yeah, I've been thinking about this. So I want to play off lane, but recently I found that playing position one ha gives me a lot more impact in my games. So I've just been spamming Medusa, but like, if it makes sense, like when I get to 3K, my goal is to start playing mainly off lane, if that makes sense. I don't okay. Know. Um, sure uh so i guess i could focus on overarching concepts that would apply kind of to both um mm -hmm. i don't think medusa is the best carry player to practice that carry hero yeah. but um nonetheless if that's the hero you want to show me today i can talk about it so uh what replay do you have in mind okay so i was thinking i have a couple i think a good first one is this one from yesterday. Uh, should I just send you the... Yeah, send me the replay ID yeah. in uh, Discord here. For sure. Oh, you can't copy-paste it, can you? Yeah, so... I mean, spoiler alert, this is a, a win, but I wasn't very happy with my... Um... In general, I want to I wanna practice my early game because I always find that I'm playing catch up i don't think i'm i don't think i'm last hitting very effectively in the early stages of the game um so i'm just gonna tell you honestly that if you're planning to transfer to off lane i would highly recommend aggressive farming carries like ursa like i want to pick up ursa that's funny and i just played Lycan. yeah i want to i want to learn ursa because my friend plays io too okay yeah so. i definitely think if you're going to transition to off lane I'm obviously going to watch this game. I'm probably only going to spend about half an hour on this game. Um, I'll point out some core fundamental things you're doing wrong. Maybe some lane mechanics to keep in mind. But I don't think Medusa, mindset-wise, is a good hero to practice if you're going to be an offlane player. Because, yeah, she just fits no description of an offlane hero. So. Um, in the offlane, I mostly play, um, I play Sand King... I play Centaur, and I like playing Necro in the off lane too. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying. To, yeah. yeah. Um. So definitely, those are three. I'd say sinking a little bit less, but even then, he's like a pretty hard farming. Uh, like those are hard farming off laners. Like all three of those have some way to farm pretty fast. So I'm gonna share my screen with you real quick. Okay. Can you see Dota? Oops. Uh. Yeah. You still see it? I I do. Okay, it's a little weird for me right there. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, that's fine. As long as you see it. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's see what happens here. The battle begins. So you're against CK Pudge. A little bit rough yeah. there, but uh it's life. Mm. I don't see anything wrong mechanically, you're just mistiming your last hits, so I can't really coach yeah. that. 
Um, I was trying to pay attention if you were doing anything mechanically now. wrong. I think you everything mechanically was, was fine. Thanks so. and have fun. At that point, it's just execution. It's nothing more. Uh... I think I get those here. Uh, I'll just tell you as a carry player, your games will be way easier if you're a survivable hero. Um, I understand Medusa eventually becomes survivable, but I think playing carry, especially this patch, is like... Okay, I'm not even gonna say especially this patch. If the opponent picks Pudge, just pick shit that doesn't mind getting hooked. You know, like, <laughs> like if they pick, you know, Earth Spirit, pick shit that doesn't mind getting rolled on. You know, if they pick... Earthshaker, pick something that can get over Fissure, you know, like, just, usually for me as a carry, it's, like, so much easier to play Dota if whatever their method of killing me just doesn't work, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. uh, in this case, Pudge hooking you, uh, Pudge should be an auto loss for the opponent, honestly, that hero's so bad, I actually am I getting PTSD from yesterday, um, yeah, you should just not care about getting hooked, I think you pushing the lane and not looking to pull it with you or techies is really the problem here yeah, um i told my friend to pull it here i think okay and i'll just say i've been i've been spamming with i've been pretty much only playing medusa in rank like, okay without i've just been spamming just because i have like i literally have like an 80 percent win rate on the hero in this bracket because i feel like games just go so late and that's literally the only reasoning i have for playing her so much okay i see mm -hmm. um so your techies is kind of griefing you here um, in the sense that I want you to pull this big camp, but you actually can't because his mine will kill it. Um, but I think you need to pull it anyway. This is a pretty fundamental concept of understanding lane equilibrium. Uh, I did this last session. I do this like 80% of sessions. Where do you want the lane to be? In front of my tower. So how do you make it there? Yeah, I... I think I do pull the hard camp at like four four minutes, but it's a little bit late. You can either pull or you can also push it into their tower, but I think either pulling the small camp or the hard camp right It's now. definitely way too early to push it into their tower and farm. Like the only reason pushing it into their tower is good is if you can then farm camps afterwards. Like so that starts applying at like seven minutes ish, you know, depending on whatever hero you're playing. Um these type of things, if you're looking to be a better Dota player, it's not acceptable to say, I do it later. It's literally, what's the lane equilibrium doing? Where do I want it to be? How do I fix it? And it needs to be like that, right? It needs to be fast. It needs to be exactly what's supposed to happen the second it's supposed to happen. To be honest with people, this, like, this is not... This is not calling you out directly. This equilibrium shit really ain't that fucking hard. Like, it's like, if the lane's pushing, look to pull. If the lane's not pushing, keep it there. If the lane's already pushing and you can't fix it right now, meaning, like, it's near your tower, you have four creeps, they have three, just try to deny as much as possible. But you know the lane's gonna push. And when it does push, go pull, you know? Um, my point is, is that it's just very fundamental. It's very, um, I'd almost say, like, clinic like methodical it's like you just have to do it correctly every single game and it, all you can do to practice it is making sure you harp on yourself and you're hard on yourself about making sure you do this correctly every single game lane's pushing into the tower you're fucking pulling the only exception to this is when you go to look to pull and there's no camp there and then maybe at that point you know they blocked it with a ward or something and that's when things start getting difficult um because teammate or opponents will actually do stuff to prevent you from doing what you want uh that's where that stuff like the higher mmr you go the more likely that is to happen at the 2k bracket for the most part whatever you want to do the opponent will allow you to do it like that is 2k in a nutshell and that's why i preach these topics at this lower mmr because you don't have to really be that creative you don't have to worry about counterplay you just have to fucking do it. Like, that's really all there is to it. So, for you and everyone watching, when it's an off lane and the lane's pushing into their tower, what are you looking to do? Uh, pull. The pull the camp. big camp, right? Yeah. 
or dive them. Those are the two choices. I had like a 4K offlane coaching session. You might want to watch that at some point. It was like three or four weeks ago. If you haven't watched it already, it'll probably help you a lot once you go back to the offlane. Yeah. Um, because I talked about a lot of fundamentals. He's he's like you said you want to do it when you're about 3K. He was like 3.8 or so. So that'll probably help you a lot as like almost a free coaching session for you once you uh, you know, get there. My point is though, these things are the same every fucking game. They really are. And um, I'm just gonna leave it there. I know I went on a little spiel there, but can, go ahead. Can I ask um? So this might be a dumb question, but like, what time do I do? Uh, so I eat the tree with my tango, right? And then I cut it, uh, pull it diagonally, right? Yeah, you have to pull it like this way. I'm, yeah, it's like it, it's what what time do it's I approximately do fifty three fifty four. It kind of depends on the creep camp, but it's usually about fifty three fifty four. And if and you know that time, timing, when's it? When is the other timing? Well, plus thirty seconds. Yeah, it's thirty so seconds, right? So it'd be twenty three twenty four. Twenty three twenty four. Okay. Um, if you don't feel confident pulling this, you should go into a private lobby with cheats yeah. on and just practice, right? Um, Definitely. these types of things, uh. If there's ever a mechanic you just don't feel comfortable with, I assure you, it's a hundred percent worth your time to just go into a private lobby and just not and just make sure you're not not doing it because you don't know how to, right? Like, uh, it, there's the amount of distress something like this will cause you if you're actually trying to climb MMR. It's just not worth it, right? So my question would be, why did you take four hundred damage there and have no mana? Uh, because the, let me see. I'm not sure what just happened. Oh, the lane was in a bad position. Yeah. So why was the lane in a bad position? Because yeah, you didn't pull. didn't pull. So yeah. it's like, the game's not complicated. Lane's in a bad spot. You took a shit ton of damage. You didn't do what you needed to do to fix that bad spot. And you put yourself in this situation. I even realized that as it was happening, I'm like, damn, this is literally just because of lane position. <laughs> yes. And so yeah. that's why it's like, Dota's not really a secret. Honestly, there's a lot of stuff that if you don't know it, like the only way to learn it is if it just slaps you in the face. Like meaning once I bring it to your attention, it's really easy. But if you, but before I bring it to your attention, you may just never know. Right. And I get that. There's a lot of things that happen that way for me where like when a better player told me, Hey man, just think this way. And I'm like, what? I've been playing Dota for, you know, 5,000 hours. And I never thought that, you know, how, how am I so dumb or whatever um my goal in these coaching sessions is literally hand you a cheat code to like this is what you have to worry about at dota this is how you avoid having bad situations and then you just win uh because nobody in your bracket thinks like this and nobody has been taught like this and that's what my goal is so yes no secret here this is absolutely not a secret i told you you should have pulled 30 seconds later you take 400 damage for free crazy uh and all your mana So the beauty of playing carry and offlane that I've learned is everything you're trying to do in the carry role, it's just flipped in the offlane, right? Yeah. So it, all these things you're practicing and applying in lane equilibrium and all that kind of shit will absolutely help you when you eventually transition back to offlane. That's why it feels so natural for me because all the lane shit and the equilibrium sh shit is the same in carry in three it's just reversed uh that's why it's so hard for me to play mid because all the lane mechanics that it takes to be like a good carry player and shit they just apply differently in mid and i just fuck it up a lot because i don't actually know i don't actually know the scenarios and shit that i'm supposed to do shit um especially compared to like these carry these mid laners that play mid like 10 times a day i'm like well they just know these scenarios better than i do um i think sitting on this mana is pretty pretty bad you know, obviously Giving yourself like a mango and a clarity would effectively be like a salve. Uh, just something to think about. You also have no mana to snake. So you're just gonna start pushing out the wave. Hello, <laughs> this is Gabe Newell. Thanks for playing Dota 2. Double kill. Yeah, I tried to do that around seven minutes. Like so here. if you're gonna be pushing out the wave, the benefit of it is that you farm this big camp, right? Like that is the benefit. I hope you know that, right? Do you know that? Yeah, yeah, that's why that's why I did it. Okay, yeah, I get so to you, like, sitting back the way you did is just wasted time. And at the 2K bracket, I really focus on people that just waste time. It always happens. You, you're not 2K if you don't waste time. It's really always too. So it's like, I noticed you wasting time here. It took you way longer to get to this camp than it should have. 
you miss the stack. You end up getting the pull, but it's not stacked, so that's effectively, you know, 120 gold down the drain or whatever. Um, let's see. Does this item help you farm? No, I was just having a hard lane, I figured, with the Pudge. I, I consciously got that instead of the, the, the attack speed one, because I was just thinking I want more survivability. Okay. Um, so, my question is, when you live or dies, is 120 health going to make the difference? No, you're right. In this, I would actually argue that you attacking the creeps faster would make you more survivable. Hmm. Because the creeps die sooner, and then you can just leave. Mm -hmm. Just something to think about. I, I, I'm fine with your decision. Like, if you consciously make that decision, great. We can talk about it. Cool. Like, uh, what I'm teaching you is I don't think 120 health in this specific case matters. I think positioning and clearing the creeps as fast as possible is what matters. That makes a lot of sense. Because my goal right now is to push the wave out. Yeah, exactly. Out. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. Perfect. I, I usually get the gloves of haste first, but I was just like, damn, this is a struggle lane, you know? Yeah, no, I, I feel you. I mean, that's why, if you have a specific reason why you did something, it's much easier to coach people. Um, I can just be like, well, you thought like this, great, that's fine and all, but it's not correct. Um... Um, if I'm in a hard lane like this, I probably would have gotten wand. I probably would have gotten at least a stick. Um, yeah. agi heroes generally benefit a lot from it. Um... At what point you exactly get it, kind of up to you. But I think Medusa, obviously one of the best stick heroes in the entire game, uh, in terms of how much that effective like HP and shit is for you. Uh, just based on what's going on in your lane, I'd love you to have a stick at this point, you know, uh, or a wand, based on everything that's happening, looking at your health and mana, all that kind of shit. Um, what I do want to talk about is, as a carry, as an offlaner, these both things matter. Uh, what do you see on the map right now? Uh, top is pushed in. Uh, they see two people top and mids. Ro well, I don't see it, but mids rotating bot, and I knew that they they made a call out in voice. I think. Okay. The point is that you don't see their mid laner. If that mid laner is a Medusa, are you worried about that mid laner? No. Okay. So it's like if that mid laner is an Alchemist, you don't care that they're missing. If that mid laner is a Puck, you absolutely care if that person's missing. Like that's just yeah. how it is. So, as an off laner, as a carry, this applies equally. I'm not making aggressive moves when the opponent hero is missing like this. Like, everything I do is as aggressive as I think I could be with Puck being here. Like, that's... I have to assume that the worst-case scenario is applying. And it's like, if I'm playing somewhat passively and Puck shows top, I immediately shift that, right? Because I know why I was playing passively, and now it's no longer the case. And then I immediately turn that button off, right? Or turn it on or whatever. Um... It's just very methodical. I know Puck's missing. That is important to me. That is information that matters to me. That means I should play this way. And then I do it. The second he shows, I do it. I stop doing that, you know? Uh, not much else to say there. Um, I just think you're being overly aggressive. If anything, I would be either here, nuking this out, or just killing the small camp. Those are kind of your two choices that, in my opinion, are reasonable. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Okay, yeah. cool. So, yeah, just another fundamental thing. Yeah, you end up living, you guys turn the kill or whatever, but there's a lot of times where my supports will ping me to be aggressive like this, and I'm consciously being passive. Like, I'm consciously being passive, meaning I have a reason exactly why I'm being passive. Sometimes I'm wrong, but um, especially on heroes I'm very comfortable on, like Ursus and Slarks and shit, usually I'm very accurate. Like, usually I'm very, like, I know their mid laner's missing. If I go on this guy and the mid laner's there, I'm gonna die. You know, that kind of thing. Um, and the second the mid laner shows, I'm happy to be aggressive. But, like, the support will ping me because they... Who, who understands your situation best? Uh, you... Me. <laughs> you, right? Yeah. So as long as you're consciously thinking and you're using that decision, or using that thought to consciously make a decision... That's all I can ask you to do. Um, okay. The games that I win the most are the games where my teammates ping me to do something. I'm confident that I'm not supposed to do that, and I have the discipline not to do it. 
the games where I'm playing unfamiliar heroes, my teammates will ping me to do something, and I'm like, I don't think I'm supposed to do this, but I'm really not sure, and I'll do it, and I'll die. Right, like, um, in other cases, like, sometimes it'll work out, but the more confident I am on my hero, the more likely it is to, like, I know exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing, and, you know, my positioning, etc. Um, okay. What's up? Okay. So it makes sense in your bracket that people kind of just dive into you and die. You're obviously being a bit inefficient with your south clarity. Oh, that should backpack the dominator, I guess. Well, I'm just saying that like you have the south clarity in your inventory and you weren't using it for a while. Is what I meant by being inefficient. Um, my question would be, what's more efficient for you, ancients or this? Um. I'm not really sure, to be honest. Um, I would argue on Medusa, especially it's ancients. Uh, like stack so okay, I actually have a question for you. What's more efficient, ancients or a contested creep wave? I mean, I guess it depends on who's contesting it, but in general, uncontested farm on Medusa is really good. Yeah. So, so yeah. in Medusa, Medusa is like the prime example of a hero that pretty much jungles exclusively, other than a lane she's going to protect. She chooses a lane that... This is like 95% of Medusa games, right? You choose yeah. a lane that if it gets pushed, you're going to defend it. And you need to make sure you're there in time to defend it. Otherwise, you're hitting jungle creeps. Yeah. Very rarely is your hero actually, like, walking out onto the map aggressively pushing towers or some shit. That's very rarely your hero. Um, so, with that in mind, as Medusa, my mindset is... I'm clearing creep camps choosing mid or bottom as the wave I'm going to defend, and if that lane gets pushed in, I'll defend it. That's how I have that mindset. And I think right now, you defending this wave is just inefficient for you. Not only because you could be farming Ancients, but also because they're all missing and you could just die. Let's see. Like, you're putting yourself at threat for really no reason, right? Is this yeah. lane need to be cleared? Well, like, where it's I at was... right now, does it need to be cleared? No, it's not a, It's not at our tower yet. Right, and do you have a support that would be okay sitting underneath your tower farming it? Warlock, I guess, but they're pushing top. Are you, I guess are you implying good. Techies is not okay to sit underneath your tower and defend it? Um, Isn't that literally the only thing Techies can do with his hero? That's true. That's like literally the only thing Techies can do. So, <laughs> that's all he can do. So, um, my point is that uh, the beauty of playing carry is if somebody else on your team can do the job, you just let them do it. Because you don't want to do it. Um, so, Good. My mindset here, uh, and I was going to ask about this actually. So the little farming pattern I set up, I was clearing the two camps, the hard camp and the small camp. I was like killing them with split shot and then coming into the lane and rotating between those two. Do you think that uh, adding ancients is more efficient, like stacking the ancients and then killing them? Because I think I do that for like four or five minutes here. I like... Uh... I want to show you something real quick. Sure, yeah. Is this an Ursa replay? Yeah, this is Ursa real quick. So oh, nice. this is actually like a... Uh, this is a game you could use for yourself if you're practicing Ursa. But my point is that I want to show you my mindset. Because I think it's just best as an example. So yeah. Ursa, obviously much more aggressive hero than uh, than Medusa. Yeah. Um, so we're going to get to this... Why am I in lane right now? I'm level 5... But why am I in lane? Well, the creep wave's at your tower. The creep wave's at my tower, so I'm in lane now. I'm actually in a pretty good matchup and shit. But what I'm going to show you is my mindset that everything I'm doing is to defend this tower. It's like every item I buy, I knew I was going to take a lot of damage defending this tower, so I flew myself an extra salve at six and a half minutes. Like, all every item I buy is with the idea that I'm, I'm defending this tower while also farming. So it's like my teammates want to rotate. Great, we get a kill. Cool. Push the wave out. Before a batting comes back to life, as much as I possibly can, I'm evading ganks. At this point in the game, they have a specter they're going to play away from, and all the attention is going to be focused on me. I'm also scared of a puck, right? Um, obviously, right now he's showing, but notice how even though I'm pretty strong as a hero, I'm playing pretty defensively, right? Um, as a carry. Have you noticed that so far? That Yeah, you have rain drops, you're playing very... Like, my, my positioning overall, very defensive. My, my, my clockwork's calling for rotation, so it's like I'm playing because I saw Puck and everything. But all of this is because this is all centered around the fact that I want to defend my tower. 
But my question is, if neither me or a Baden are dying, who benefits from that? Uh, you. Right? Me, right? Because I'm the carry, I'm farming, I'm good with that. But if my teammates keep rotating, sure, I'll kill the guy. You're a Medusa, though. This is this wouldn't be an option for you. So notice how I'm just going to push the wave out. They're all not here, so I'll push another wave. And then I'm going to rotate back. Jungle, same thing as you just did. Take the bounty. Push out the lane. Jungle. Jungle. I see two in their jungle. Okay, if I didn't see this shit, by the way, I would have gone Ancients. If I didn't see, like, three heroes on the opponent team right here, I would have gone Ancients. Because my decision between going lane and Ancients is literally, do I have any chance of dying in lane? Because I asked you, if nobody dies, who wins? And you said, I do. So my entire predication around my farming patterns is just making sure I am farming without dying. So in your case as Medusa, like, the only reason I'm farming this right now is because I saw the mid. Notice how she's back. I'm like, okay, well, I'm out of here. I'm going to defend my tower as long as I possibly can. Like, if you're a Medusa, I think you should do the same thing, right? You can defend your tower. It's like, of course, I'm just killing this guy because he doesn't know what he's doing. But the point is I'm going to keep rotating back and forth between lane and jungle. All my items are predicated. Notice how I got that extra stack in. Yeah. Fast forward. They're constantly pressuring my tower, so if CK... The difference is, I'm against Enchantress of Bad and two heroes that kind of push tower. Yours is a CK, who does not push towers. And eventually, this tower does go down to like four heroes, but this whole time, I haven't left for Ancients, because my lane was always safe to do so. It's either underneath my tower, or the opponent was showing three heroes. In your game, it was not safe. In my game, it was. That's why I'm here. The minute that they're all missing, look at this. They're all missing. What do I do? You go there, because Puck right? is off the map. It hasn't been until 14 and a half minutes until that's been the case. So this may not have been the perfect example. But every time I went back to lane, I consciously knew I was safe to go back to lane. In this case, I see nobody on the map. I don't feel comfortable going back to my lane, so I just farm some ancients, right? And that's the point, is now, by the time that I could have gone back to lane, I now see two, two mid, right? So I'm like, oh, I could have been safe there. But it's like, I'm up by 7k, what if they were bottom, and I just die as this, like, free-farming Ursa at 14 minutes into the game, right? Like, I'm 4-0-2 with a Battle Fury. Like, if I just die for free, that would be a disaster. So you as a Medusa, I want your rotation when you ask yourself about Ancients, Creep Waves, all that kind of shit, to be 100% decided by, you know, in my case I was an Ursa, so I also have this thought of, could I kill them? As a Medusa, that thought obviously doesn't apply to your hero. Um, but your thought of defending this tower, on the other hand, notice how every time I returned to lane, it was to defend tower. Every time the opponent showed elsewhere, I pushed out the lane. But why am I pushing out the lane? when the opponent's showing elsewhere. Aren't I effectively defending the tower, right? Um, by doing that, right? Everything I did that game is all about not losing my mid tower, or safe lane tower. Eventually I lost it, but it was at, you know, 14 and a half minutes into the game or whatever. Like, I already have a battle for you. I don't give a shit about that tower anymore. Um, all of this is about protecting my own farm. And the only things that concern me about my own farm are losing my tower and dying. Those are the only two things that concern me. So when it comes to mindset there, um, as much as I can do for those things, I'm going to stay bottom in lane as much as possible. But the minute that either of those cases is not the case, meaning like I either can't defend my tower or I can't farm the lane without dying, I'm no longer going to be here anymore. So that's how I'm looking. I, I like This to me is kind of like giving me um, anxiety by watching you sit in this lane all the time. Right? Uh, because... Uh, I'm, what's up? Do you think if my opponents were better that they would have killed me by now? Like the Witch Doctor and the Puck? And I stuff? think they could have easily coordinated a way to kill you, yes. That makes sense. If I was CK, I would have been like, this Medusa's playing out of position for like the last four minutes. Can we kill this guy? Like, please. Like, I guess the best mindset for you to have is if both you and CK are hitting creeps, who's hitting creeps faster? <sighs> who's screening creeps faster? I guess... I should with split shot. Is it right? the guy with split shot or the guy with single auto attack targeting, right? Like, you know, yeah. Um, so we've already seen this part. 
And notice how in my game, I was getting invaded a lot. I was flying myself raindrops. I had a full wand. I flew myself an extra two salves. I flew myself an extra set of tangos at eight minutes. My point is, first off, you have to recognize exactly what your purpose in lane is. As a safe laner, it's usually to defend your tower. In the off lane, it's usually to pressure this tower, right? Like, that's just the flip side of off lane. And then all my items, all my skill builds, all my playstyle is predicated around doing that as best I can. If I lose my lane as off lane, so be it. Like, I'm going to try to pressure the tower anytime the carry leaves, force him to come back. Um, if I win my lane as off lane, I'm trying to, like, look to even dive the guy or whatever. As a carry, it's just reversed. Um, the point is, you're definitely not flying yourself enough regen. You're definitely not buying yourself the right items to do your job effectively as possible, right? Um, and I hope you see that with, like, your constant mana health situation... Uh, in certain games, you can play a bit greedy with your mana and health because the opponent is just not doing anything to you. Meaning, like, they're not threatening you, you're free farming, etc. But in this game, similar to mine, if you're not dying, you're just kind of winning. But in the difference is, you're actually against two heroes that their only way to play Dota is to, is to try to kill you. Like, CK and Pudge... Those heroes literally serve no other purpose at, like, you know, 10 minutes into the game. Um, so for me, I ask myself, is this random trading with CK to my benefit? And I would just say no. So a lot of times when I'm farming, if me and him are exchanging abilities, we're hitting each other, whatever, based on hero matchups and everything, was that engagement a good use of my time uh, not. yeah and that's all i ask myself like when we both trade spells we both take damage we both use mana did i consider that a net positive experience for me as a carry player right like that's what i ask myself and now that you're asking yourself this I hope that will help guide your decisions when you're playing Medusa, whether or not it's between Ancients and CK. Your hero doesn't really have to stack Ancients, by the way. You only hit four targets. Like, stacking Ancients really isn't that efficient for you. It might even be bad, because if you get, like, dragons plus the Prowlers, you might not actually be able to kill them very well. You know, like... Um... I would almost argue in this game that after maybe 10 minutes, 11 minutes, you're clearing Ancients off cooldown. Like, meaning every minute they spawn, they're dying. The cool thing about Ancients as well is you almost are guaranteed to get a neutral drop because they're 30% rather than 10% each. And then, um, obviously now you have an Iron Talon, which is like the fucking dream for any ancient, any ancient clearing hero. Uh, so... The other consideration would be potentially pressuring that tower, but as Medusa, that's not really a thing. Yeah, this is just... I don't know why you're here. This serves no purpose to me. I, I, I can't comprehend what's going through your mind if you, once you have adapted my mindset to why you're here. Why? Why am I confronting these guys? Why am I even interacting with these guys? Wouldn't you agree from Pudge... CK's perspective, the most annoying thing would know you're hitting creeps and they can't do anything about it. Yeah. That would absolutely be the worst case scenario. It's like, when I'm playing against Wraith King, I usually feel like I'm just gonna lose the game if the guy's hitting creeps and I can't touch him. Mm -hmm. It's like, if he just walks back into lane, clears the wave, and walks away, and now I know he's you know buried deep in the depths of the jungle and I can't go touch him, it's like, I feel like I just lose. I'd say Medusa's kind of similar to that. And... Uh, so anything that doesn't fit that description is just wrong. Obviously, you buying back is insane. I don't know what you're doing. I was really on So the thing is, are they fucking with you a lot? I mean, up until now, no. It's the first big one. Yeah, I think they've kind of fucked with you a pretty good amount. I guess, in the, yeah, you're right. In the laning phase, they did. So the thing is, it's just like, for whatever reason, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna open your eyes, I hope. For whatever reason, for whatever reason, people just don't think about Dota, okay? 
And what I mean by that is, where was this? I Who was I playing? This was with CC and C on my team. Who was I playing? Was it? Who was I playing? It was somewhat recently. I know I was playing carry, and I know we won the game. Is it this jug game? Let me see. No. Okay. All I know is that I was playing with CCNC. He's a pretty good player. You know, he's like 9.7k or some shit. He's an okay player. I might and have seen this what i might have seen this game okay and yeah. i had an off lane four position pango and the opponent i don't even remember what my off lane hero was and the off lane and the enemy team had a five position enchantress how do you think that lane's gonna go yeah pretty hard it's gonna be bad right yeah and my off lane was bitching at like four minutes into the game and ccnc literally said to the guy you had a four position pango against five inch. What do you think's gonna fucking happen? And so yesterday I was bristleback with a first pick pudge four position against Slark Enchantress. Did I go into that lane expecting good things? No. I actually got tri laned by an Earthshaker and I died seven times in like the first four minutes of the game. Okay? Like I actually just died relentlessly because otherwise my option was to like sit behind my tower getting no XP or to die. That was like my two choices. The Enchantress was, like, literally blocking my way of cutting creeps, so I couldn't even cut creeps. My point is that I went into that lane completely expecting to have a nightmarish lane, and all I did was I made the best of it, and I actually was, like, the same level as the opponent offlaner, even though I died, like, seven times. The point is, though, I went into the game thinking, this is what's going to happen to me, I just got to deal with it. For people like you, when I hear that you tilted, why the hell are you tilted right now? Let me just ask you, why are you tilted? You said you there bought back. Like, why are you tilted? Because they're all low. It was just... It was just okay, yeah, it was just so what I hear from people oftentimes is they get tilted about a game, okay? And a lot of times for me, as long as I understand that my lane was supposed to be hard or that my lane was supposed to be good, like, that's all that matters to me. And it's like, I just deal with the situation at hand. And as long as I feel like I'm dealing with it as best I possibly can, I just kind of accept it. Obviously, that game for me was really tilting. But I don't think that tilt, like, actually affected my play. I literally couldn't do anything. I was against Enchantress, Slark, Earthshaker, getting tri laned with a Pudge. Like, I can't actually outplay them. You know, I can't yeah. do anything. I'm just going to get Enchant slowed, fissured, and die to Slark. So, the point is that, um... If people live, so be it. If people are invading, like, why do you think the opponent's rotating to your lane a lot this game? Well, because if they shut me down, they have a chance of winning. Okay, let's try again. Are they going to make plays around their Luna? Uh, No, because she wants to farm. Is CK going to rotate to mid? No. Okay, so where are the plays going to happen? That makes sense, our safe lane. Then it's going to happen to you. Who's easier to pick on, you, and Windranger, or Centaur? Definitely me. So who are they gonna fuck with? Me. You. It's not complicated. Dota is not hard. It really, like I know it is hard, but it's not actually like really that hard to predict how this game's gonna play out. You're gonna have like three or four heroes bottom. Otherwise, you're just gonna win, right? Meaning, like, what I mean is that maybe the opponent's gonna misplay and not do that. But if they don't do that, aren't you just gonna win? Like, isn't that just the optimal play for them to do that? Right? Like, that's their best option. If they don't do it, then okay, you know um i always think that way it's like if the opponent doesn't do that then i'm okay with it but i'm gonna prepare myself for that like when i was ursa it's just like i'm always prepared for that puck to come bottom i'm always topped off because i know enchantress abaddon wants to pressure my tower with creeps and abaddon's passive and i know puck will naturally rotate to my lane because my lane's the pressurable one so i'm constantly geared up to get fucked with like i'm constantly worried about that like because i know that's something that's going to happen to me this game and all I have to do is survive it. What do you know? We have like an AK advantage at 14 minutes because they kept coming bottom and I was killing them over and over again. You know, it's like, in your case, it, the equivalent of killing them would be to just survive and keep farming freely. And they're spending like three or four heroes to, sh to allow you to hit creeps freely. You know what I mean? Like you're just still farming freely. Um, that should go into your items. That should go into your playstyle. That should go into, you know, your ability, leveling, all that kind of stuff. So the point is that I see you 
in a lane that's obviously going to get contested if you just ask yourself, you know, what's going to happen this game. And you're against a hero that's only purpose is to kill you. Pudge, CK. That's all they can do. That's all they do. So why are you presenting yourself in a way that can die? Ever. It's like, uh, put yourself in the offlaner's perspective. What does that offlane hero want to do? Why is a hero like CK offlane not played in my bracket? Because the carry is just going to fucking clear the wave and walk away, and then you're a CK. And it's like, now what? <laughs> you know? Uh, nothing. Nothing happens. <laughs> Uh, so that's, that's why, um, people ask these types of questions. Uh, so, I understand you may have not tilted for the exact reason that I just kind of harped on a lot, but I'm hoping that my inner monologue of what's happening to you this game can help you think about Dota in the future, where it's like, Absolutely. yeah, I hope it's like so. When you're, like when you're a Spectre, you go into the lane almost expecting that you're going to lose so you know what i mean if you go even you win because you're a specter yeah and uh the beauty about specter is she's really hard to dive but she's actually really easy to harass so i like to have i like to play specter against heavy dive lanes that don't harass very often An example would be axe that's when i love playing specter because his goal is to just dive you um and he can't really do that that well um so at this point I think your farming rotation is fine. You're going to play for efficiency. Um, I don't really know why you're dragging these creeps to this other camp. You only hit four targets at once anyways. Like, just kill one camp and go to the next one. Um, okay, let's... So you've naturally walked this way. Okay. Okay. Clear the wave, walk away. Cool. What's up with that? Why aren't we farming these camps? Why are you interacting oh. with this guy? Um, I wanted to play on, in in their jungle, so I wanted Why? to clear the wave. Uh, I don't know. I wanted to put a little bit more pressure. I know that I want to just like sit in my triangle and. Dude, you're a fucking Medusa. Far. What do you mean you want to pressure? What am True. I missing here? You picked Medusa I, okay. and you're trying to pressure. So I feel like yeah, no. I usually what I do in Medusa is I'll just fuck off to the triangle for like twenty minutes and farm. Okay. But I just recently I feel like I've been doing it a bit too much. And I've been trying to play a little bit more on like their their jungle. I don't know if that's like. Hey man, if you want to play their jungle, pick fucking Ursa and shit, man. Don't play Medusa. Okay. Like that's really all there is to it, right? Um, I don't have actually like I'm I'm interrupting you because I I these are things I understand. I've heard most situations before, right? When I'm coaching. Yeah, you're just playing a hero that doesn't do that, so don't do it. Okay. And don't try to force yourself to do it. Medusa is a hero that's all about getting her own farm, and the only time you farm aggressively is when you have to. And you technically can. Meaning, like, I'll farm aggressively on Medusa if it doesn't hurt my efficiency. Right? Same with Alk, you know? I'm only going to take aggressive farm on Alk if I'm actually allowed to, and it doesn't make me farm less. But, like, on Jug, I might be more aggressive on farm because even if I have 30 less GPM, it's still worth it to me to take that aggressive farm because I can actually create pressure. On Medusa, you're not creating any pressure. So, by inconveniencing yourself, it's just a waste of time, right? Like, it, you're not doing anything. You're not. They're not scared of you. You know, you're a Medusa at 18 minutes with a Yasha. You know, you, you don't scare them at all. Uh... I had a really low MMR coaching session a while back where the guy said he liked pushing the lane at, like, two minutes in because he liked to pressure the opponent underneath their tower. And I'm like, you're a level three jug. Do you think they give a shit about being underneath their tower right now? It's like, obviously that's, like, a much more simple version of this, but it's the same concept, right? Uh, at 18 minutes, they just don't care that you are doing this. If anything, by pressuring, you're going to force yourself to participate in fights. And this is just so much time I'm watching that you're not hitting creeps when you could be. Um, <laughs> I said out loud, I'm not hitting creeps right now. <laughs> right as you said that, as I TP'd bot, I'm like, I'm not hitting creeps right yeah, now. Yeah, and then some, okay, well, <laughs> I'd say People's Gift is probably just worse than Iron Talon, unless you're planning on uh, fighting. As long as you're still farming, I think Iron Talon's way better. Um, you are in the dead lane right now, but they're all showing mids, so I guess that's life. That's why I was there. I would never really like TP minutes. like this, though. I think the fact that you're, like, fighting top is just, in general, making your decision different. So I don't want to harp too much on this because 
Well, first off, why'd you TP base? That was, a, that was a, like, I'm so mad okay, about that. Okay, that was sus. Okay, that's fine. As long, you know, misclicks happen. If it's a misclick, that's life. I was trying to TP top, so I walked up. Double kill. Is this good? Is because I can see all of them. I'm like, is this is this what you're like... supposed to do. Yeah. Okay. So notice how the oh this is whatever this is is bad. This is very bad. Very bad. Very bad. Very bad. No 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 no. Sorry. Um. So if you do this with your enemy with your teammates dead, what would the opponent do if they're good? Come kill me. TP to that post. What if they just walk at you with four heroes? What happens? And then I don't have a TP and I have nowhere to farm for like a minute. Okay, so even if you don't die, you're just hiding yeah. for a minute, right? Right now, if they walk at you with four heroes, what happens? Um, either I die and end up in base or I TP out. Don't you just TP bottom if they walk at you with four heroes? Yeah, yeah. So if you stay top and farm and they walk at you, you just TP bottom. If you TP bottom and they walk at you, now what? So, yeah, my mindset was like I had already pushed in the tower top, so I didn't know what to do. You have to understand your play being punishable or not. This applies to every lane. So this lane, like, TPing to your own safe lane, I have made this, like, a fucking cardinal sin in my channel. You TP yeah. to safe lane when there's, like, four heroes forcing you out of top. Otherwise, you do not go here. Because that situation will apply. Where if I TP bottom, they'll just run at me. Like, yeah. if they're any good. And you can't give them this like 20% opportunity to potentially do this. It's 2234. What can you do right now? What? Do Do I just walk into my triangle? Yeah, really absolutely. Need... There's farm okay. right there. Okay. I knew I knew TPing to the safe lane was bad, but I was like, I pushed the, the wave in. I, I didn't know where to go. I cleared all the jungle camps. I'm going to be very so clear. Just... What if you don't have a triangle? What if your teammates already cleared it? What do you do here? Uh, walk into their jungle, I guess. Does that feel good? Like, you feel good about walking into the jungle? Go mid, I guess? Hit the tower top? I mean, Medusa doesn't really hit tower. Okay, so... Do any of those options sound good to you? No. So what do you do? I mean, I could wait in their, like, left side of their jungle and wait for those creeps to spawn. Assuming my triangle's not available. Or just keep... Or send my Manta Illusions to farm. Okay, top. so my question is, if you stay on this part of the map, what are the next creeps you're going to farm? Mm, the jungle creeps, probably. Or so there's not going to be it. any creeps to farm before 23 minutes? No, the wave the, the wave that's coming in. Okay. In 30 seconds. So yeah. the creep wave that's going to be here around 2245, right? Yeah. That so... Works. If I don't feel safe to do anything other than wait, where do I wait? Oh, I get it. So just wait there for that wave to come. And so where should I wait? Like up uh, here? Up here? Yeah, where I could TP out, I guess, in the trees. Yeah, and the minute you see two mid and you see this creep wave right here, you just go kill it. And then now it's 2245 and then it's 23. You go kill this, you go kill this, and then there should be a um, triangle there again for you. But that's why it's actually a really hard concept to understand when to sit in the trees. Like, just to wait in the trees. And the concept of waiting in the trees is, I can't TP bottom because this is fucking trash. This is never good. And I have no creeps to farm. But the reason why you're not supposed to wait in the trees right now is because you do have creeps to farm. You have your triangle to mm -hmm. go farm. I'm looking at 2234. I see three juicy jungle camps right here just waiting to be consumed before the 23 minute mark. And then I can kill them again, right, at 23 minutes. Like, that's efficient. Um, I just hope you see how punishable this play is. Your team, your bracket yeah. may not punish it, but I also want you to understand that if the opponent were to just walk five mid right now, what are you going to do? No, I know. I, I knew teleporting to the safe lane was bad, but I just saw... No, let's be the, clear, though, just to make everyone and you very clear that you understand here. Mm -hmm. If they walk 5 mid and push your tier 2, what are you going to do? I could split push their tier 1 Can you? Bot, but that, no, I don't get there in time, I don't think. So, what are you going to do if they go mid? What are your two choices? Like, walk towards mid and... Farm like, neutrals nothing. and maybe walk yeah. towards mid? But if you stay and top they and they 5 man mid, what happens? Uh, if I stay top, well, then I'm pressuring their top. Yeah, tier, you can right? actually pressure this top tier too as another choice. Maybe you just take it for free. 
The point is, by T being bottom, if the enemy team forces a fight right now, you're forced to be there. Or you hit neutrals. That's like your two choices. And if your two choices are to hit neutrals or fight, that's shit. That, that's a situation that you should always avoid if possible. Right? Always. So, there's some times where it's unavoidable. Let's be very clear about that. But, I never want you to put yourself in that situation willingly. The opponent was beautiful. They just let you TB bottom and push it out. Yeah. It's very nice. I think that, that's why I make those kind of plays. You I shouldn't make them anyway. I'm get punished in higher brackets. You, I see the creep wave there and I get you really should not make them anyway. You should never hit this tier two. Waste of time. Dude, this Luna is insane. Absolute waste of time. I don't know what you're doing here. I don't give a shit about this Luna. I don't care that he built an E blade. I don't know what the fuck you're doing here. This isn't hitting creeps. This isn't creating pressure. This is just. Doing this. Mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Now you die. Like, uh, here, here's how it is. You've said you've watched my coaching sessions. I believe you. Do you know my opinions on like dead lane shit and all that kind of crap? Yeah. Just play accordingly. You'll win games. Like you'll actually okay. just win. Like this shit doesn't do anything. I, I have no idea what the fuck you're doing. You know what I mean? Like uh, there's no coaching here. I'm like, what? If he understands the dead lane of like top and mid, why is he here? I, I can't process yeah. it. Right? This all started with you TPing bottom in the first place. Right? That's what it all started with. Um, and it leads to this you feeling forced to do something that you just have no business doing. Right? Um, this tier two top bottom just doesn't matter. Let's be very clear about that. That tier two bottom does not do anything. It does not open up the map for you at all. It doesn't. Like, it gives your team 140 gold each or whatever. That's what that tower does for you. So, like, it just isn't relevant, right? The heroes that will take that tier 2 are ones like Lycan, where they clear all the waves and then they can use their summons to pressure that tower because they got nothing else to do for 10 seconds. You know, like, mm -hmm. those are the heroes that are naturally going to kill that tower. But they don't do it because they feel the need to kill the tower. They do it because there's really nothing else for them to do right now. You know, um, there's a lot more things you could be doing with your hero than this. Right? Uh, I'm telling you guys, if you don't believe me, uh, like, I don't really know why you're here if you don't believe me. I'm talking to, like, chat and everything. But play top and mid as Radiant, play bottom and mid as Dire. There's very few exceptions. There are exceptions. I have to worry about them in my games because I'm 8.5k. You don't have to worry about them yet. As long as you understand the punishment of UT being bottom here so you don't do it anymore... If you forced four heroes top, then you TP bottom, and then after you clear the wave bottom, what do you do? Uh, there's they they they, they TP'd where? So in the earlier example where I told you the only reason you would TP bottom is because you had four heroes running at you top, right? You TP bottom, and then where do you go? You push out the wave that you saw there, and then where? Ancients and jungle. Problems. And then you just kind of walk your way back to top and mid, farming yeah, your way there, way top, right? Yeah, that's but that's what you do. Dota's pretty rinse and repeat, you know? You pressure top, if they don't deal with you, you keep staying top. If they deal with you, you TP bottom, you push it out, you farm there, and you walk your way back top. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. You can watch fucking 9k, 10k carry players. It's literally their playstyle in a nutshell. Like, just watch it. <laughs> it's literally, it's not me just, like, praying to God that, like, people will listen to me because I'm some shitter that's streaming. It's like... I'm literally watching professional matches and I'm watching professional players and this is where I learned it from. So it's like, you know, BSJ, I'm 2K. It doesn't apply in my bracket. What are you fucking talking about? I'm telling you the absolute optimal play. Just do it. Like, you know, um, sorry. I know that those are just things people love to come to my channel with uh, excuses. So, um, do you have another hero that I said I only wanted to spend about 30 minutes on this game? Do you have another hero to talk about? Um, I wonder if we can do... A Sand King. Sure. Uh, if you have a see. recent Sand King game, that'd be... Oh, yeah. I have a Sand King loss that we just did in ranked. It, it was kind of a struggle game, though, so I don't know. It sure. was like we really shot the bed in that game. Somebody said, all in all, being honest, my win rate has gone up by 30% just by following Deadly. Cool. Dota is pretty straightforward. And I, uh, I know for a fact that for someone like you that I'm coaching right now, it actually applies as offlane, too. Um... And uh, let's see what you do at Sand King. Do you have the replay ID for me? Yeah. Let me see. Uh, like I said, this is kind of a stomp. And uh, it's because of... I mean, it's again, like, I feel like I got... Uh, I, we lost our lane early, and I was unhappy with... Uh, I let I let myself get carried away with my Nyx position for... Okay. 
Um, so but, people ask this question, and I'm going to tell you this. I'm only answering this question because this is relevant to you here. Yeah. I'll, I actually should probably tell my YouTube editor to just upload this game. I played a Smurf game of Centaur like three days ago, four days ago. And my I was offline, right? And my my carry and mid absolutely just uh, refused to ever come top. We are radiant. Yeah. They just never came top. So somebody in my chat said, what happens if I'm carrying my off lane and mid lane or just jungling? That was the equivalent for me. I was off lane, my mid laner and safe laner just never left my own jungle. What does that mean? If I'm playing around top and mid, what does that mean if my other two cores are playing jungle? I'm asking you. Uh, well, you're you're creating pressure on top of mid. Right? But what in terms of your team and as a whole, what's oh. what's being done? Well, you're stalling the game out, right? You're making it go long. Yeah. So, but effectively, that is correct, actually. So, effectively for our team, what's being accomplished? Prepare for battle. Um, you're giving them time to farm. And... The answer is your team is accomplishing literally nothing. Yeah, they're not taking. They're not taking. Your team is doing nothing. That's what's happening, yeah. right? But yes. by creating pressure top and mid, I'm also pre preventing the opponent team from doing anything. Am I right? Yeah. Like, because if they do anything, I'll take their towers, right? So what do you think happens in a game like that? What did I do as Centaur, as an offlane Centaur? I was number one fucking net worth at 26 minutes in the game because my teammates wouldn't leave bottom and mid, and I just kept taking all the farm that they should be taking, and... Yeah. I had a bajillion net worth, and then eventually I'm like so fucking farmed that we win a fight at 35 minutes, we just kill their base. Mm. That's what you do. Yeah. Like, usually during this farm at the high brackets, if I'm pressure farming, my team will play around it and will take objectives and shit. But in lower bracket, if you're, or even in my games at 6k bracket and my smurf or whatever, if your teammates aren't utilizing it, you're just farming a lot. And then eventually you'll win the game because you have a shit ton of farm. Like, that's what it is and by creating pressure while farming you're also like you know preventing the opponent from farming as much you're just being more optimal than the opponent so um my point is that recognizing your teammates are required usually for you to accomplish anything but another way for you to accomplish something is to just get so fucking farmed so quickly while pressuring that if you're six slotted at 35 minutes you can do it all yourself Especially at like the 2k bracket, you can do it all yourself. So I'm going to talk about that from an offlaner perspective uh, this game. Uh, I would say against Slark, I guess going Burrow Strike's reasonable. I don't think Sandstorm would be really that great. Um, I just got it because they had three stuns on the bounty, to be honest. Okay, so what should be your first and foremost concern when leveling your skills? The lane. Okay. That's all I care about. If you yeah. know that answer, I'm not going to worry about past that. So if your reasoning had nothing to do with the lane, then you just need to change that. If you thought, I want it for the rune and I don't care if I have it for the lane, then great. If you didn't think about the lane, then that's just wrong. Definitely not utilizing creep aggro at all. Okay. I don't know if this is like some secret to you. What happens if you burrow strike on Slark? He'll hit me. Instantly. He'll just turn around and hit you, right? Yeah. So are we ever burrow striking Slark? casually like in an aggressive manner are we ever burrow striking slark the reason i did it was because we had creep advantage but in general i would say no okay like it, it doesn't fucking matter to slark it just okay. doesn't he's gonna hit you back so okay. my question would be when do we burrow strike if that's the case uh if we know we can get a kill or he's he's yeah. like low enough health secure range creep sure if he's like low enough health where if you burrow strike him he won't be able to fight you back sure right but just going on a full health Slark to me is like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Like, I'm a Slark player. I'd laugh at you and just hit you back. It's like, I just play this out in my mind. I burrow strike the Slark. I get cast. I get hit five times by Slark, and I have no health. Is there any secret to that? Like, did I have to concoct that random solution out of my ass? No. Like, that's really fucking obvious, right? Like, my point is that Dota in lane and in game, but especially in lane because it's a simplified version, is... I cast the spell, what the fuck happens afterwards? And then I decide based on that knowledge what I'm going to do with my spells, when I'm going to use my spells, like what they accomplish in this lane. So for me, I feel like my burrow strike in the early game here would primarily be for securing range creeps 
and where like if the guy is contesting my creep i will hit it once and burrow strike it instantly you know like where it's at 150 health i hit it burrow strike you know that's like probably how i would be using burrow strike in this lane um in my opinion sand king's a pretty weak laner right now um so i don't like really love playing sand king i think his only good lane matchups are illusion heroes yeah. um because most of those heroes rely on kind of poking you down with illusions and you just level sandstorm um pretty much every other matchup for him is usually pretty bad you know like slark jug anti-mage uh pretty much every other matchup is bad for him but um ursa the point is that i played out in my mind what my ability is going to do what's going to happen after i use it and then i just don't ever do that again if you didn't have that knowledge that's fine you know maybe you've never played the matchup before but then after you used your spell, please pay attention, everyone watching, and yourself. What happened? Will you ever casually burrow strike a Slark again? Please, no. no right? Please, no. Like, like, especially against Witch Doctor with a Nyx, right? Like, uh, the supports definitely influence this. But, um, yeah, uh, that, that's, that's, that's all there is to that. Uh, you guys kind of already lost the lane because you just took 400 damage and have no salve. Uh, if you plan to play like that once or twice... And you think it's actually really important to win in your lane or whatever, what should be in your starting items? A salve. I think I have a salve coming on the courier. Okay. But yeah. So. Either way, right? A salve, yeah. So instead, start tango salve and fly yourself an extra set of tangos. That's simply yeah. more optimal than the way you did it. Yeah, you do have a salve coming. Great. Okay. Yeah, I, I did trade intentionally, but now I understand with Essence Ship. That makes sense. Though. Yeah, so I understand if you don't understand the matchup. That's great. Um, I am pointing it from a very obvious perspective of I know this matchup. I don't ever do that. Um, for you, it's like... Um, I would hope every matchup you're playing, you think like that, and then you learn your lesson the first time. Thanks and have fun. I'm not sure if you're aware, but this lane is ass. This is not a good lane for you. This is like a 90-10 favored lane, up for the other, lane for the other team. Um, are you friends with this, Nyx? No. Okay. Um, in an optimal scenario, what do you think the Nyx should be doing for you? Um, I guess... Uh, I don't really know. Like, pulling the wave back? Yeah, at 45, you should cut the wave, block their small camp, drag it to your tower, and sit it outside of tower range. Yeah, I blocked right. their small camp, but yeah. Yeah, two minutes in, to... yeah. So, yeah. my question is, are you ever going to lane this directly? No. No, it never works, right? So, your yeah. support, he's supposed to intercept the creep wave at 45 seconds into the game. Drag it, back. drag it here. He's supposed to, on his way, block the small camp and then drag it to here, right? Yes. Why is he doing that? Not you. Uh, because I want to be... What you're saying at 45 seconds into the game? Yeah, why is it him, not you? Um, because it matters less if he dies? No, it's more about the fact that you want to get the XP from this first XP, creep wave. yeah. Okay. Okay? So, if your support's not doing it, and you do it, what's effectively happening? He becomes the carry. He becomes the offlaner for the first wave. Yeah. For the first yeah. wave, right? He's yeah. getting the XP that you should have gotten, but at the end of the day, is it effectively the same? Meaning, uh, between the two of you, you accrue the same amount of XP. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, earlier as Medusa, the lane being here, not acceptable. If your support's not going to do it, you pull. In this case, lane is not laneable. If your support's not going to do it, you fucking do it. Yeah. Like, there's just no other option. Like, that's just how Dota is, right? Like, somebody has to fucking do it. BSJ, my supports are trash. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. Well, then you need to do it. Right? Like, yeah. I'll do it. Like... You think I have good support players at 6k all the time? My support players are half the time are, are ranked 900 core players that have never played support in their life and they're forced to play support because they're in a ranked 8k average game and they have no idea what they're fucking doing. I deal with this shit all the time. You think I just accept it? No, I have to like, I have to deal with it myself, right? So on your case, the beauty is you're not laning against an 8k guy. You're laning against two 2k guys. So you can just do this and they're going to let you do it. Maybe the witch doctor will fuck with you a bit, but... The idea is, people ask me all the time, when do I cut creeps? Well, when the lane's not fucking laneable. <laughs> like, you know, I was like, well, if I fight these guys directly, shit. So maybe you didn't know going into this lane that that was the case, right? I figured it out quick, though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So my goal would be either at like a minute 15, you learn your lesson real quick and you do it, or yeah. 
at the very least, the next time you ever play this matchup, you do it. Yeah. I'm telling you, when I'm learning new heroes and new matchups, I have to learn this lesson myself, where I think the lane's laneable and it's just not, right? I have to learn this too. This this knowledge of matchups and shits, it, it, shit, it never ends. Like, it, it doesn't end. You always have something new to learn in Dota. That's, like, the cool thing about this game. But your proper reaction to this shitty lane is to is to go put creeps. And they may say, you know, BSJ, aren't you just giving Slark free farm at that point? I feel like he's pretty much free farming anyway. So, uh, you know, now that the lane's back, we feel pretty good here. Your Nyx yeah. is fucking insane. I don't know what he's doing. I feel vindicated, thank you. <laughs> yeah, your Nyx is literally nuts. I don't know. He thinks he's strong in the lane he's not. That's just what he it means. He walks back to well. But I'm not going to, like, harp on, you know, my teammates. I know that it's my responsibility to play good, you know? What should you have done here? Are you diving this guy? No. Okay, lane's pushed. What are your two options? To pull pull the hard camp or cut the cut the wave? Pull or dive. Pull or dive. Pull or dive. Pull or dive. Okay. Doesn't matter. Two options. Okay. That's all that matters. That's the that's yeah. all. That's all. Pull or dive. If you're like a bat rider or a bristleback or an axe, sure you can cut creeps. You're a level three sand king. You're not cutting creeps. Sorry. Okay. Um, like, the only reason you cut creeps behind tower right now is because you're actually killing them right there. Like, you're actually, like, walking to these creeps right here and killing them. Mm -hmm. You're not, like, dragging them away. Because by dragging the creeps from here to here, what are you accomplishing? Kind of like, uh, shoving my creep wave into their tower. And, and then, then resetting the or living to here, yeah. right? So yeah. what's literally a better version of that? Pulling. Yeah. So, like, why would you, you know, in that case, why would you do it? So, the only reason yeah. you would cut creeps here is because you're actually killing them, right? Uh, killing the creeps, that is. Um. So, yeah. yeah. I literally asked you, you know, if you're pushing the lane into their tower, what are your two options? You answered me correctly earlier. Why aren't you just fucking doing it, right? Like, yeah. you knew that before you came into this session. Dota's just all fundamentals doing the right thing at the right time. So, um, the beauty of this kind of session is that you already have... A decent amount of the knowledge um just use it yeah. that was my goal with this session to be honest is that i feel like i watch a lot and then like in my games i just like i do this kind of stuff yeah absolutely and this is just inefficient right uh yeah. like you could have maybe farmed a big camp during that time depending on how big your creep wave is that's mm -hmm. pushing into their tower sometimes it's just you resetting the lane equilibrium and giving up this creep camp other times the the lane's so big that you not only pull but you also farm this right um which is cool that's great. Um, okay. Okay. So my question would be, in a lane where they're favored, do you want the lane equilibrium to be static or chaotic? They're favored. Uh, if it's static in front of my tower, it's good. But chaotic, I guess, yeah. Chaotic. Okay. In general, you want it to be all over the place. And if possible, to end up near your tower. Mm -hmm. So that means a lot of creep cutting. That means a lot of lane pulling. That means a lot of, you know, just random shenanigans that you're trying to pull off to make it so it's not normal. Because if I'm a Slark, I want this lane chilling in the exact same place the entire time. And I want you to have to walk up and me hit you and kill you. That's what I want. Yeah. So that's why it's so easy to transfer to off lane coming from carry. Because it's like, what does my carry want? Do the opposite. <laughs> like, they want a stable lane. They don't want to get dove, dive them. They they want a stable lane, drag it around. They want they don't want to fight me, fight them. You know, like force them to fight me. You know, it's like like it's the CK. It's like I'm gonna do my best against the Medusa to try to force you to fight me at all times. If you avoid me and you do it correctly, I can't really do much about it. That's like a bad matchup or whatever. But the point is I know exactly what you want, I know what I want, I'm gonna try to force that. In this case, you're kind of just giving him exactly what he wants. Uh, this kind of shit that I'm talking about, that you're doing, it happens when I'm playing in 6k players. People don't think like this. I actually don't know how they got to 6k fully, like, I actually got to 6k not thinking like this either. Um, but the way I look at it is, like, my argument is not that you need to think like this to get to 6k. My argument is you need to think like this if you want to get there faster. You know, if you want to be, if you want to climb quickly you have to think like this um interesting oracle builder let's see uh okay so that one's a bit different right the guy has half health and he's yeah. alone and he's near your tower ish that was a bit different 
Lane's pushing into his tower. What are you supposed to do? At, at 53 again, right? Yeah, just practice if you have to, but go cut a tree and pull it. I feel like I don't pull in the off lane at all. It's weird. Like in the safe lane, I'll always pull the small camp. I'm not used to pulling that. Why do you die here? Because of the lane's positioning. Why is the lane positioning here? Because I, cause I didn't pull. Okay. Yeah. Dota's a simple fucking game. Why did you die as Medusa? Lane was pushed out, and you didn't pull. Why did you die as Sand King? Lane was pushed out, and you didn't pull. Yeah. Dota is a cool, simple fucking game. Like, it's actually very simple. I'm glad that you felt the need to pay me money to tell you this stuff. <laughs> okay, so, let's see. You deserve it, man. Thanks, man. Okay. <laughs> Why are you not dying here and farming free? Yeah, because the lane is in a favorable spot. Cool! Wow! Very much wow. Why did Slark just take 300 damage and not do anything to you? You know, it's like, wow. <laughs> wow. You know, it's like, oh, <laughs> mind blown. Cool. Okay. Okay, we're dragging a little bit. I don't know about dragging these because, eh, you know what, fine. You know what? Okay. Eh, I'm not okay with this. Uh, same idea as my jug last session. Uh, obviously you get clapped by the hell bear and they're their creeps, so they literally know you're there. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that's like a they can't fuck with me play. Do you see what I mean by that? Like, yeah. By you doing what you're doing, you're literally saying if they come over, I don't give a shit. Uh, that's why I was like, I'm not okay with this. And then I was like, I guess I'm okay with it because they didn't do anything. And then they killed you. I'm like, I'm not okay with it. Uh, in general, like, I want you to really think about what your statement, what your actions are stating. Um, what I mean by that is like, if I farm that camp with two of their creeps. I'm literally saying, hey, come over here. I don't give a shit. Um, and obviously, you do give a shit. So, uh, yeah. I'm playing as if I'm strong when it's like a Yeah, exactly. You're not strong. So, if you thought you were strong and you were wrong, that's fine. But if you didn't think you were strong and you just did that, then you're just bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are you really planning to, like, epicenter and kill this guy? I mean, I saw the Nyx. I feel like the way you're playing this lane, this skill's really nice. Yeah. This doesn't really I don't make know sense why to me. I don't know why I took two points in in Q either, to be honest. Um, I don't hate the two points burrow, you know? It's like, it's okay. But... The fact that you took your point in Epicenter kind of makes, like, no sense to me, personally. I think I kind of mindlessly just take my ult at level 6 almost always on Sand King, and I guess you're making me reconsider. How many heroes in the game go the same skill build every game? Uh, pff, very few. I would say effectively zero. I would yeah. say every hero has at least 1% of games where their situation should be different. Yeah. So if you're going to play a hero a lot... If you want to, like, default level your skills for, like, the first five games you play a hero, that's fine. That, that really is fine. Like, I think um, it takes, like, a decent understanding of your own skills to utilize them. Um, people may say, like, he used Epicenter, canceled it, lol. It's like, you're going to get hit by Slark, you're going to get cast by Witch Doctor, you're not going to use Epicenter in this lane. Like, I'm sorry, you're just not going to use it. So, it's not lol that you used it and didn't actually channel it. It's lol that you leveled it in the first place. Like, that's the, you know, lol. Uh, yeah, I... Uh, if you have more than five games on Sand King, I think this is just unacceptable to autopilot level your ult, right? Obviously, you're silver yeah. tier Dota Plus, so you clearly have more than five games of Sand King. Um, most played. Yeah. So, let's talk about your skills. What does Burrow Strike offer you? Uh, stun, obviously, a little bit of magic damage and an escape. Okay. What does your Sandstorm do? It's like a safe way to farm. I feel like it's okay. a good way to farm. farm. Safe way to farm. What does Caustic do? Caustic? The reason why I level Caustic against melee carries is like, I just feel like it's good against melee carries. So, it, so when you were against Slark this lane, were you in, like, farm survival mode or, like, kill him mode? Like, what mode were you in here? Yeah, so I, I leveled Caustic before I realized it was such a struggle lane. I was thinking, like, I'd harass him on the wave with the Caustic, but now that I see it, I would have 
probably taking more points in Sandstorm. Which I kind of think important. going to the second Cossack point isn't, like, nuts. Just because if you are Sandstorming a creep wave and hitting it, you're still, like, farming it with Caustic, right? Like, you're still yeah. clearing it a bit. Um, so, yeah, the second point of Burrow is a bit strange to me, and this, obviously the point ult makes literally no sense. So it's like, at this point, I ideally would either have 132 or 131 holding a skill point, potentially in Burrow Strike. The main thing about Caustic is if you don't need it, you're also delaying when you have max Burrow Strike, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if I'm just maxing Sandstorm like 131, I could like hold my skill point and effectively, you know, maybe level my ult if I absolutely need it, but then otherwise put a point in Burrow. And then at level 10, I have 441 rather than, you know, 342, which just means my, like at level 10, I usually want max Burrow, right? Like yeah. if possible. So if I have two skills that kind of do the same thing in this case, which is Sandstorm and Caustic, I would avoid leveling Caustic simply because it delays my Burrow Strike being maxed later. Um, okay. So, let's talk about items. Uh, what does Urn accomplish against Slark? Yeah, I don't know why I went Urn this game. I guess I thought that it would counter his ults regen. I wasn't really thinking about it too much. So, you realize he can purge Urn on a 6 second cooldown, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Just making sure. So, Dota's not complicated. You go useless fucking items, and you play the wrong and wrong, you're going to be 0 4 and one at 10 minutes into the game. Yeah. It's not complicated, right? Like, uh, when I say that, I always say that in an insulting way, and people be like, BSJ, you're so mean to your students, whatever. It's like, my point is, you're quite capable of thinking better than this. I know you are. So I'm kind of just calling you a dumbass because you probably are willing to admit to yourself right now, wow, I look like a dumbass. And that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's what I paid you for. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's dumbass. like, you know, I don't think I'm being like toxic or anything. I think I'm just no. being like, hey, dude, you're way better than this. Just like, you know, can you prove it to me maybe? Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. Would, would like Yules be better or like Force Staff maybe? Okay. So if you rush blink, how does that work for you? Does that feel good or bad? It feels bad. It doesn't give me stats. And like, you're pretty much just a blink stun at that point, right? Yeah. That's so why my question it. is, when could you consider doing that on Sand King? It means you're kind of farming less, right? Yeah. Yeah, I usually rush blink if there's a lot of uh, backline heroes I can hit with like a multi stun epicenter thing. What uh, this is a little bit higher level and maybe doesn't matter in your games, but what else might you consider if you're not farming? Who is farming? As an offlaner, usually. Uh, my my carry. Yeah, how about your four position? Oh yeah, Nyx. Like if I have a Phoenix, doesn't yeah. that hero kind of farm a lot? Yeah. So as an offlaner, I might be willing to go more sacrificial items because I know my Phoenix will farm. Yeah, is your Nyx going to hit creeps? No. Okay, no. So who's hitting creeps? You. Me. So yeah. for I, I'm helping you go through my mindset here. So I'm not going an item that stops me from farming. I have to farm for a little bit longer. It doesn't mean that while I'm farming, I'm not looking to take part in fights and shit. It just means that I do need to be able to farm. So I can't just go items that don't let me farm. So in this case, like rushing a blink. So the next step is, um, if you're building to survive yourself, I would say Yules is probably the ideal item, right? Yeah. Um, if you had to go a team item, what could you consider here against Medusa Beastmaster? Medusa Beastmaster, probably uh, something against physical, I don't know. Yeah, what, what's nice against split shot and summons? mechanism or even crimson against yeah crimson summon. yeah crimson yeah very nice item so i would say in this game my items would look something like a crimson a yules and a blink i just you know in terms of what order you want them if you're winning your lane maybe vanguard super early is great if you're not winning your lane maybe going like brown boots wind lace into the um into the yules because that's more of like an elusive farming item that then allows you to get your tank item that then allows you to buy your blink you know it's like Yules Blink Crimson. It could be Vanguard Yules Crimson Blink. Uh, you know, like, it could be any order of those. It's just, like, what is needed at this current game to... current moment in the game to function, is how I would look at it. Vanguard doesn't really help you that much against Slark, Witch Doctor, and Lane. No. No. What if you were actually laning against Medusa? Would Vanguard help you a lot? 
Vanguard helping against Medusa? I mean, not really, because Medusa doesn't really want to lane against me, right? Doesn't it help you, though? Because you're getting a lot of health regen, physical, and yeah. she can't do anything to you anymore, right? Yeah, So it's like, true. it's letting yeah. you farm more aggressively, and if she tries to hit you, it just doesn't matter anymore. And, yeah. and Medusa's only way of stopping you from being aggressive is by hitting you a lot and wearing you your health down. That's not the case with Slark, right? He's just going to essence shift off of you. Which doctor is going to maledict you? And Vanguard's not going to do much. So people ask, like, what order of items would you go? It's like, well, which one helps me now? And then which one can I buy later? You know, it's like, yeah. Yule's out of all those items, I think, is your best. It helps you farm a little bit. helps you against Slark. And, uh, yeah, right? So it purges the, the leash, right? Yule's purges the leash. It doesn't purge the leash, but effectively removes, yeah. you know, three quarters of the duration of it or whatever. That makes sense. Um, okay. Yeah, so... Uh, you can also use the witch doctor when he's ulting, you know, all this kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, just think about how you're playing the game and, uh, what you need to get at that current moment. So, obviously earn kind of just mindless purchase here. It doesn't help against Slark at all. Um, I remember I was on my Smurf account yesterday or two days ago, maybe, and I was gyro with an ogre support against Batrider necro and my ogre got like first blood or some shit and he got a bassy huh and i said why the fuck do you have a bassy and he was a nice guy he was actually a nice guy he wasn't toxic and he said you know bsj what could i have bought that was better and i'm yeah. like i'm against bat rider necro do you think mana is my concern <laughs> do you think fucking mana is my concern dude and he's like no and i'm like did i really have to tell you that as like a 6k player that in this lane, I don't give a shit about mana, you know? It's like, you're against a Baden. Did you really have to rush a Spirit Vessel? It's like, did, did you have to learn that lesson that a Baden can purge shield Spirit Vessel off of literally all of his teammates on a six-second cooldown? Did I have to teach you that as a 6K player, you know? So it's like, here I am in a 2K lesson trying to teach you about thinking about your items. And all I want to emphasize is that it's just a nice advantage that even 6k players will not utilize. It's actually pretty easy. What I mean by that is to practice and slowly but surely get better at, it is pretty easy. Will you be like an AK itemizer? No. Right? But could you be far better? It's like when I saw Aerie going for Wand before he goes for Windlace. I'm like, would you rather have three all stats? or 20 movement speed as a support. And it's like, you know, <laughs> I feel like that's pretty obvious. <laughs> so, yeah. um, in your case, you know, you're just playing in Slark, you know, no, you're trying to elude damage. You don't really, you're not gonna itemize to trade with them. That's not really what Sand King no. does. You're itemizing to survive while you Sandstorm so that you can push in the wave. He'll take a lot of damage while he's getting Sandstormed and you'll get the farm that you need. Um, so you actually win Tranquils. Honestly, Tranquils into Yules would be reasonable if you think, hey, every time I farm, I'm going to take Slark pouncing me, Witch Doctor Maledict, and I'm going to be 100 health. Yeah. That's actually reasonable if along the way you want to get Tranquils, right? Yeah. Um, at this stage in the game, going Tranquils is definitely very late. Um, Burrow Strike means I'm fighting people. This means I'm farming. You're fighting a guy that you can't fight. You're dying. Pretty straightforward here. Uh, what's happening? Um, I would be avoiding this Slark at all costs. If he's killing you, it's because he had to come find you and kill you. It's not because you're presenting yourself on a silver platter and then he's killing you because you're in front of him. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? The difference here? Yeah. I'm not expecting you to never die to Slark. I'm just expecting you to not deliver yourself to him, right? Um, so, do you have one more game we can go over real quick? Uh, yeah. Okay, we got about... I'm going to do about 10 minutes on this last game so we can talk about the same okay. concepts... Maybe one more time. If it's Medusa, if it has to be Medusa, okay. But if you have any other heroes, that'd be great. Let me see. I played, uh, I like to do losses with this. I'm a masochist. I gave you, like, that Sand King game is, like, the worst game I've played in months. Yeah, if you have a good game, that's fine, yeah. too. You can learn plenty from a good game. <laughs> Let's see. Will it, what day is it? It's the 14th? Oh, cool. Because I was, like, worried about the 9th. You know, like, they only keep the replays for a week or whatever. Okay, I have a win on Sand King. I don't remember this game at all. Sure. But, uh... Is it within the last week? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Here you go. Cool. I I really appreciate the uh, 
the harping for the yeah, record, yeah, that's, yeah 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 <laughs> uh, if i feel like i can make you feel stupid in a way that like yeah. next time you won't feel stupid that's good I, I, i'm not trying to just make you feel bad the, the goal is no, you're I like oh wow up. i could easily never do yes. that again and uh that's yeah that's i want to get rid of all these bad habits because I, yeah. I really am interested in climbing. okay so you're sand king with a techies against jug coddle mm -hmm. would you say you have a good favored lane here uh sand king with the techies against jug coddle absolutely not that's okay a so we're kind of in the uh, just don't die to spin yes. idea, right? Yeah. Uh, we don't really care about Coddle all that much, though, right? Like, as a support, Coddle's not really going to threaten us. Coddle's kind of all about enabling his carry to threaten you. So all that means is we have to think about Jug threatening us. Um... In lane, what's the worst thing that can happen here? How are we going to lose the lane, similar to last time? How are we going to lose the lane? Probably. We're talking getting... immediately, so we're referencing your starting items. Oh, uh, if I get spun down, if I... Are you going to die full to zero to a spin? Probably not. Okay, what's going to happen if you get spun on, worst case scenario? I, I lose some health, I pop a salve. Okay, so why the fuck don't you have a salve? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thought about the lane? Already solved half our issues. We just burrow striked on top of the guy. Isn't burrow strike? Okay, you know what? He lets you kill him. Just, I can't believe that happened, but that's fine. I personally would be preserving burrow strike for when uh, Jug spun me, not for any other case. That's what I'd be doing, but hey, look. You had three heroes, you killed the coddle. Fine, fine, fine. Not gonna worry about that. I don't know what this is right here mm -hmm. there's creeps over here that are dying that you need to be there i don't know what this is i don't even want to comment on it there's creeps that need to die and you're doing whatever this is are you a four position no then don't play like a four position this is okay. this is what a four position does there's creeps that need to be last hit and you need to be there last hit them. you gave jug a free deny on his uh range group. denied Okay, could you just creep aggro? Okay, it's fine. I don't care if you miss him as long as you're creep aggroing properly. Cool, cool, cool. That was a great time to creep aggro. Yeah, onto the range creeps. Right like here. Right. Yeah. He just yeah. walks up and denies it. Oh, it's fine. I think I literally tried to, and then I, uh, and then I missed. It. I see, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect time to creep aggro that one. Yeah. Perfect time to creep aggro that one and that one. Can't get that one, that's fine. Three aggro. Burrow strike onto the jug. Uh, you and I clearly aren't on the same page. Going earn against jug, very cool. BSJ, he wants to go earn against... Uh, against morph and are you laning against the fucking morph sir yeah i'm not so i noticed that I, yeah so what items help you against jug in lane boots wind lace yeah wind boots lace. yeah so i think i i, I focus on the like care yeah it was like you said against the morph i focus on getting the urn i noticed you were playing a game as slark against specter and you made silver edge like sixth item and i was like why did he make it so late and then i realized like it wasn't your problem until then like i think i rushed the urn because of morphling but like you said i'm not laning you're against laning against jug yeah. <laughs> yeah. like yeah like yeah i'm not even interacting with this ur yeah. or morphling yet when do you rush uh urn if you're against morph and he's not in your lane when do you rush it if i'm planning on rotating to his lane how about if you just don't need any other item to lane yeah i need yeah. items to lane you know, like lane. <laughs> I can't just ignore the lane I'm in for the first 10 minutes of the game. You know, like I have to play accordingly to what lane I'm in. So um, Dota is about what problem are you facing right now? Do I have to address anything? If you don't have to address a problem right now, then how do you think? Mm -hmm. How do you think after that? That Yeah. I'm oh. asking you. Answer the fucking question. If I if I if I don't have a problem that needs addressing right now, then what do I need to think? 
how can I make myself stronger, I guess? How about what problem do I eventually need to address? Oh, yeah, the, the later problem, yeah. That's all Dota is! Like, what yeah. problem do I need to address eventually? You know, it's like, so instead of waiting until that already is a problem, I then have an item to deal with it. It's kind of like, if I don't need a farming item, but I know their co-op's going to have an orchid sometime around 15 minutes, I might want to go first item Manta on whatever hero I'm playing. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, because I know that something co-op's probably going to do, and I need to be ready for it. It's like... It's the same shit. It applies to carry, it applies to soft lane, it applies to mid. It's like, what a problem am I dealing with in lane right now? And if there's no problem right now, then I can look into the future, right? I can look to see, like, okay, what item do I need to play this game later? And so I think you going Spirit Vessel first item, that's completely reasonable. Because there's a Morphling on the enemy team. But we need to play the first eight minutes first. I don't want you to lose your lane by an extra 10 CS or, you know, extra death or two because you have an earned first item. You know what I mean? Uh, I want you to play your lane as efficiently as possible and then after that's taken care of, then we go earn. Okay. You burrow striking on top of this jug is absolutely insane. I just want to be very clear to you. So, if you aggressively Burrow Striking is absolutely insane, how often are you going to use Burrow Strike? When he spins. Or not at all, unless he spins, right? Okay, so... Or, he's, or if he's already used spin and my tech is Okay, gonna so in general, start. though, certain skills are used because you're initiating the engagement. Other skills are used reactionarily, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, there's even been games on stream where I buy Yules because I'm waiting to yules the axe when he blink calls and if axe hasn't showed himself in the fight yet i'm just never gonna yules and people will be like passive yules omega lol and i'm like well the axe never blinked in yeah so i'm not gonna yules because that's why i bought it so my answer to you is like if that's why you're burrow striking why do you have two points in it is two points doing more damage to the guy when you burrow strike away from a spin what it's effectively get... giving you is an extra hundred range burrow strike but yeah. like is that worth a skill point over more than doubling the damage on your Sandstorm? For some reason, I felt like we could kill him after his spin with Techies. But, but is yeah, that like how you're playing the lane? Like, is that going to make the difference? No. Isn't the way you kill him by getting him lower health and then Burrow Striking yeah. him? Right? That's how you kill him. So yeah. leveling the Burrow Strike is 60 damage total. This is 25 damage a second. You know, it's like, you know, yeah, I got nothing. That's all I got. So, um, just thinking about what your skills offer you and how you plan to play the lane, when you're going to use them, is, like, really important. If I'm using a skill reactionarily, and that's all it's for, I'll pretty much just put that one value point in it and leave it there. Um, you've definitely burrow strike this guy in some insane fashion just twice now. The fact that he hasn't punished you is very fly I know. Oh, cool, you guys go on the jug and die! Crazy, yeah, that's a, you know, shocker there. I should have pulled there. <laughs> No, I don't even know if you should pull. You should just not be maxing Burrow Strike and that creep wave should die twice as fast and then you can worry about the decision later. Oh god, you wrote... Dude, does PA want you in her lane? No, she wants to farm. Okay. Yeah. Is this an option? When is this the only option? When do you do this shit that you're doing right now? If I, if I can't play top. If you, can, if you are literally incapable of laning top. Like, yeah. that's the only time this is correct. Let's not overthink Dota, right? Like, you're overthinking. You're, like, getting fancy and shit. I don't know why you're here. Now you're forcing a tri-lane for your PA, and Jug can just do whatever the fuck he wants. Is this net good for PA that you're here right now and got a kill? Is that good for her? No, because I took a lot of the farm. Yeah, you took a lot of the farm. She's splitting XP with you. Like, the guy's going to come right back full health, full mana. Now you leave. So you're almost leaving him in a worse spot than he started. Now you're ganking a Morphling as a... What? Okay. Okay. Your overall answers to my questions have been pretty good. Meaning, like, when I ask you about a specific situation, you generally know the answer. I don't expect you to always know matchups. You know, in this game, I asked you going into the lane, is this a good matchup for you? You said no. Then why are you fucking building like it? You know, it's like, 
You built like you don't need items for this lane, and you built your abilities in a way that's super aggressive. You know, it's like... Tomatoes, tomatoes, it just doesn't add up. It just doesn't... Uh, you know, I, I hear the answer from you, and then I don't see it. So... To conclude this lesson, you need to ask yourself these questions because you're actually pretty decent at knowing the answer. And then your way of playing the game, skill build, item build, play style, it needs to match the description you gave me. It needs to fit, you know? It needs to match up. So, um, a great practice for you as well would be to watch other players play heroes that you're playing sand king whatever and say i think this lane's gonna go like this i think in general he'll probably go for these items first and then this item and then he'll max this skill first and go back for this one next because of this this that and this and if it doesn't line up with exactly what you said then try to understand why you know try to be like oh he's i thought he would just go straight earn for the for the morph, but he actually went Boots Windlace because he's landing against Jug, and then, then he went for the Spirit Vessel. Oh, I see. It's like, it's like in this lane against the Witch Doctor Slark, he actually went for Tranquils because he kept taking a lot of damage from the Pounce plus uh, Maledict, and then he didn't want to keep ferrying selves. And then he went Yules because he's farming, and then he went Blink, and then Crimson because they have Medusa B. It's like, oh, you know, it's like, you know, usually, I think you're quite capable of seeing that kind of shit and then being like, oh, that's why they did it right um and all i'm telling you is i think this should be equally capable of being practiced by watching people as it would be by also doing it yourself right so maybe if you're gonna play five or ten games of sand king in a row just watch one or two replays of sand king and make a nice educated guess you know about uh about how they're going to skill and how they're going to play, right? Uh, and I think it'll pay off a lot. Do you have any final questions? Uh, no, thank you. I, I, I appreciate it. It's been uh, pleasant to grill you, man. I'm just, you know, in the, in the nicest <laughs> yeah, way possible. That's, that's why I chose. I knew you wouldn't hold hold any punches back. So Nice, yeah, man. Thank you. It seems like you have a good attitude, so definitely uh, good luck with your climb. And I think if you just apply these things, you'll, you'll be good. So have a good one, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Bye bye. Uh, that guy was funny. The other guy was much more serious. That guy was like, kind of like, I'm here to get shit on. Here I am. Um, it's kind of funny. You kind of get like two different types of students. You get the ones that like, this is my opinion, and even if I'm wrong, I want to defend it for the sake of like, you know, I did really have a reason. And then you have people like him where it's like, I know I'm shit, and you can call me stupid, whatever. <laughs> it's honestly a. Uh, it's honestly pretty funny. I don't think either one's, like, particularly wrong. Like, I don't think students that are, like, the first one are bad. It's just funny to, to hear the differences there. Mm -hmm.